So at this point, if you've got it working so far, you're getting some of this output. We're getting toward um, our eventual goal. Um, we've got this data. All of the data in that JSON file is stored in this variable. Now it's a local scope variable, which means, you know, if we had a if we had a thousand kilobytes of data in the JSON file, yes, we would have loaded all of that into memory. But because it's a local scope object, this variable only exists for as long as this onload has has run. When we're finished with onload and we do what we need to with this, the data gets freed again from memory. So yes, this is loads all your data, but temporarily because it's in local scope. If we had defined the var outside of the get social function, it would have been hanging around in memory the whole time and using up your memory. But because we've got it in the function, it's temporary as long as we need it. Well, we've, we're loading the data, we need to do something with it, and here we're showing that we can look at specific fields of our data. That's fine, but then the function ends and then the data goes away. Well, we want to display that on, on screen. So we, because we've got this data and we've got all of the data of one network, comma, the data of another network, comma, and the next one and the next one, we need to loop through the data to display the data on screen. Let's first do a little bit of console output to get a hold of, to get a handle of what, we, what we're doing here, and then we'll display it on screen. Um, I'm going to comment out all of these lines. I'll do the multi-line comment this time. because um, I want to comment all three of those. I know it works. But multi-line, remember, is slash asterisk, and then asterisk slash where we want that to end. We could do double slash on each line or multi-line. So make sure they all get commented out. Next line. We will do um, for the for loop. The skeleton of that looks like this. We're going to do something for a number of times. I think we've worked with for loops a couple of times before. We'll still use it a few more as time goes on. But here, for a certain number of times, do the following. We need to define what that loop, what those loop parameters will be. So inside of for, we will create another temporary variable. Traditionally, it's i equals 0. We're going to start with the 0th item of the array space. As long as i is less than um, response object dot social dot length. Social is the part where our array is at. We have three items in the array. We have the property of length that we can extract from any array or string. So here we're saying do this as long as i is less than the length. Currently our length is 3. It counts it in whole numbers. 1, 2, 3. There's three items as length. So we're going to go from 0 to 2. 0, 1, 2. Three times semicolon, i++. plus plus. That's what lets us loop. We're, we're going to start with the zeroth time, loop it to the first time, loop it to the second time, because we've got three items in the array. If we had four items, then it would automatically loop to four if we added a fourth item to the social network back in the JSON file. I'm going to do this three times. I'm going to say console log response object dot social i. I'm going to borrow the i variable, which exists basically only in the confines of the for loop right here. I'm going to borrow i here. So we're going to start with zero, social network number zero. Dot name. plus quotes space and we'll do dash right there. It's going to say the name of the network dash the um, description of the network plus this 
response object dot social borrowing i again the zero with social network dot desk let's try that save and run that this should be enough to get something nice out of the console this should loop through all of the networks we've got saved we've got three of them saved so far it should then display the name of that network plus a dash and then the description of the network and on the next line it will loop over to I will become a one because at the end of all of this increment I by one I starts at zero so it's the zero with network I plus plus when this code is done I has become a one so then we've got social one fine increment it I becomes two so then social two that's Twitter is two less than two? Nope. So the loop ends. Let's see. Now run that. Random. There we go. YouTube dash long form videos. Vine dash short form videos. Twitter dash 140 character missives. The trick is that we're using our for loop to do something for a certain number of times. We've defined the range of that loop within the parentheses. And because we've got all this data stored in the response object temporarily, we then parse it or process it. <clears throat> Show me the zero with item its name. And we've got name. What do we have? Name, desk, URL, and graphic. You have all those four fields of that one network. And the first time around the loop, it's the zero with network. The second time through the loop, it's the first one. If this worked for you, what we're going to do then is add, perhaps complete our JSON file. Because all of this code right here, the algorithm so far is functional to some degree. So if we finish our JSON file with the other three networks or whatever I have there, this will then automatically display all networks if our algorithm is correct. But let's pause here. Is everyone's for loop properly working? If it is, then I'm going to jump back to the uh, JSON file. And based on what's already there, I'm going to add the next networks. I guess the next uh, six networks. Back to my networks.json file. That's my data so far. The last data chunk did not have an ending comma. So we must now put a comma because we're going to add a new network here. I'm pretty sure I wrote that data properly previously. I've been testing it so far. It seems to work. So I'm going to copy all of that and uh, paste that after the comma. Um, again, very, very important that you've got that comma, no final comma. It's not the final one, but no final comma at the end. We've got then the fourth item um, of the network, which is uh, Google+. Plus. So pick four, or network four. That's Google Plus. A description for that is um, maybe Google's social network. The graphic of it is pick four, and then some Google Plus link, in this case google.com slash plus PMD Interactive. Links Profiles on Google Plus look like that. I still have that data in memory, and what I realize that a lot of people don't realize, when you've copied something on Windows or Mac, it stays copied until you replace it with something else. That means I still have that chunk of data still copied. You don't have to waste your time by selecting and copying again. It's still in memory until it gets replaced by something else. So I simply paste it again. I have the Twitter chunk. Don't forget the comma after Google Plus. 
now fill in the next network. Pick five. What's five? What's five? Pinterest. So just to tell you, I'll write them in a moment. You've got Pinterest, then what's next? Instagram. Next. Tumblr. Next. Facebook. And last? SoundCloud. So I'm doing Pinterest here. Pick five is Pinterest. Pinterest. Um, what's a description for Pinterest? Um, we'll say uh, graphics heavy network. Pick five. And then an address. Uh, Pinterest. If you know any address, you can put it in Pinterest. I think we've got a Pinterest account there. Pinterest.com slash PMD Interactive. Another network, so comma and then paste. It's still in memory. And we've got pick six. That was Instagram. for that one. Graphics heavy, filtered, and square picture. I'll say filtered and square picture network. Whatever description that you have for these networks. Filtered and square pictures. Let's pick six. I think on all of these I, I probably have my company's network, so it's going to be Instagram.com slash PMD Interactive. And that's a G. It's just that it cu it's cut off because of the line. But it's the gram, not Instagram. It's a G, not a Q. PMD Interactive. So we'll, we'll fill in all the networks just so that we have data. We had the first three examples to work with. Now that we are seeing that the algorithm is getting there, I'll fill in the rest of my data so we can do something more interesting, the actual randomized part and showing it on screen and such. Um, so next, pick seven, there's Tumblr, Tumblr is, uh, what's Tumblr about? I would say short attention span. the short attention span network. On that one, uh, if you'd like, you can do uh, bncampus.tumblr.com. Tumblr has no E there. It's B-L-R, not B-L-E-R. I'm learning at Facebook. Say 1.7 billion users and counting. Let's pick eight. Can do Facebook.com slash instructor Victor C. And the last one, SoundCloud. That one is uh, the audio network. If you haven't heard of SoundCloud, it's uh, it's like the YouTube but of audio. If you want to hear a cool podcast, you can go to SoundCloud.com. VM Campos. So that's a little tedious, filling it in, but um, we have the schema. These are the various fields, and uh, that's plain old data, which we then process in the JavaScript. 
if you go off and, and use any, any network's data, its API, like Facebook, Instagram, Flickr, Marvel Comics has an API, you can connect to the Marvel Comics database and pull out 75 years of comic book data, and it's going to give it back to you in JSON format. So if we understand how the, how the data is coming to us, we can then do something with it. Right now we're outputting to the console. In a moment, once we've completed this, we will then output it actually on screen. We go ahead and fill that in, save the JSON file, run the index file, and click the button, and you'll see all of this, all of these networks then show up in the console. It automatically knows to do all nine of them because we have response object dot social dot length that is keeping track of how many objects, how many items are in the array of objects, and it then automatically loops and automatically displays the name and the description of all of them in the console. See, I'm going to run my index, random network, there it goes, let's hit the name of the network, its description, and run through them all. All right, we'll go back to our index file. In my case, line 31 is where I've got my console output. That's a sort of a proof of concept to show that I'm able to process the data simply to the console. Instead, what I want to do is display on screen this very same data. So what we'll do is we will display on screen in a string before my for loop. I'm going to create a variable and Call it var str. This will be an empty string to start off with. Now I'm using the keyword var here, of course, because um, I'm not borrowing var from line 25 because I've got a semicolon there to finish it and stuff in the middle. So it might be just cleaner to start the new string there. Um, so we're starting a new string of data to display on screen. So it's an empty string. Next line, string plus equals. We're going to add to that empty string in quotes, semicolon. We're going to add um, some more data. Eventually then that data will be uh, displayed on screen. So this will be a div 
that we're going to display on screen so that we can process it. And we're saying we're saying that we're going to start to write an image tag, and then that'll close a div tag. Well, the image tag needs a bunch of um, properties. So we're going to break this up into multiple lines just so that it's a little more readable. Source equals single quotes. Single quotes here because then we would break the string prematurely we can put double quotes. So inside of source, this is where we're going to do our first part, where we're going to break the, um, the creation of the string. We'll do quote space plus space quote. We've seen this before. Basically inside here dynamically, inside of the source, we need to display one of our images. So after the plus, here's where we're saying then response object dot social brackets put x there for the moment dot graphic. <coughs> so this is going to be our image attribute, um, our, our source attribute to our image tag, displayed on screen. Um, but we want to do the random one. We want to randomly load up a, uh, a graphic. So before we proceed, let's set up a random number generator. Because if, if I were to put 0 here, well, let's, let's do this really fast. Let's go ahead and put a 0 right there. Save it and run it. Click the button, and the 0th picture should display on screen now. Oh, yes, sorry. We need a second plus to continue our string there. We started the string plus the dynamic data plus the rest of the stream. Don't forget to plus there. Easy to do, honestly. Now, save it and run it, and the zero width graphic should display after a button press. Oh, one more thing. Now we need to show it. We're building the string, but we need to then actually show the result of that. Next line. We're building the string, then we need to show it on screen. We have, um, we have that div up here, div show. We have that div that we've been waiting to, to use. Let's say, we'll do it this way. We'll say, um, let's back up to line 16. We've created, an, we've created a JavaScript element for the button. Let's create a JavaScript element for that div, so that then we can put data into the div. So here, I'm going to say new line before xhr. We'll say l div show. That will be document dot get element by id, comma at the end of that line, and then in quotes div show. Should have done that a little while ago. 
But here now we've got a JavaScript object for the button, for the div, for the data. So L, that's E L, L div element, L div show, based on get element by ID, blah blah blah, div show, that div up there. So now we have a reference to the placeholder in the HTML section. I'm going to copy that, ldiv show. So we're building the string, line 34. I'm going to reference ldiv show, that object, dot inner HTML equals string. Take what I've written so far in that string, process it as HTML in the element of div show on screen. Now if you save it and run it and click the button, the zero width graphic should display on screen. No other graphic will display, of course, because I've hard-coded zero. If I go back, just for practice, and I go back to social uh, eight, and that'll be SoundCloud. It's the ninth item, starting from zero. So this is what I was getting at, that eventually we need to do this via random numbers. But here, if I put in one of these numbers, I can make one of those appear. Let's pause right there. Is everyone getting a graphic to appear on screen?
Okay, so here it's displaying um, the graphic itself. Um, we want to do it random. We've got nine possible networks. So let's create a random number. Line 31, we started the empty string. I'm going to say, okay, I've got another variable to create. So instead of end of line there on line 31, change that to a comma. And we want to then do another. We'll call this uh, random soak, random social network. This will be a number for our random, to choose a random social network. Make sure you've got a comma before that. And then equal to math.random. Some uh, parentheses, semicolon. So this is going to generate a random number between 0 and 1. So we need to do a little bit of editing here to, first of all, bound us between the possible networks, between the nine networks. I want a number between 1 and 9, number 1. And then I want to round it, or else I'll get a fractional number. And there's no such thing as index 1.2. There's either an index 1 or an index 2. So we'll say times response object.social.length. We saw that this was something we used previously to bind us between 0 and x number of networks in our JSON file. Now we're saying let's create a random number between 0 and the length of the array. That will still give us a fractional number. So now we need to round it. But we need to round it down so that we include 0. We can randomly include 0. Our array starts from 0. So we have to round it down. I'm going to put a parentheses all around this expression, like that. So make up our random number, and then parentheses math.floor. This will force the number down always. Even if it's a 1.9, it'll force down to 1. If it's a 0 0.9, it'll force down to 0. I want that. I want the, the possibility of a 0th item in the array. Don't forget the semicolon at the end of that line. And now that we've got a random social number, what do we do with that? We use it, we replace social whatever number there with random soak, random soch. That's a random number that we've generated. Every time we click the button, every time we click the button, it's a new random number because random numbers being created inside of the function get social. So every time we click, new random number based on the number of social networks we have. Take that random number and use that as the current social network index position graphic. Save and run that, and click it, and you'll get a graphic. And click again, another graphic, and another, and another, based on our nine networks. I'll close my console, because it's going to get kind of full. But there we go. Different networks every click. Well, that's one of the fields of data. It's just the graphic. Below that, I want to display the text, the name of the network. If people see that little cloud and don't know it's SoundCloud, I want it to display the text um, of the network, of the particular ran current random network. Um, so we're going to keep adding more to our string. For readability, what I'm going to do is at the at the end of the line, before the end of the semicolon, space plus 
enter. I could keep this on one long line, but it's going to be hard for you to see, so I'm putting it into a new line. We've got that so far, we're going to add, wait a minute, not there, over there, never mind, it's back there. Not yet, we will be breaking it, but not yet. We're breaking it right here. We want to display next the graphic, I mean the text below the graphic. It's going to display the, the graphic and below it I want the text. So um, we'll first put a break there so that the uh, text appears below it. Quote space plus quote. That's where we're breaking it. Enter on the next line there. Before I forget this plus right there. So we're going to display next the name of the social network in question below the graphic. Same syntax response object dot social something from the array dot name. Well the something is again random soak. Random soch. See if that works. Uh, it should continue to display your graphic, of course, then break to a new line, and then um, display the current random number social network name below the graphic. Okay, so that's displaying the picture and the text below it. I want to get fancy here. I want that description to appear when you hover your mouse over the graphic. Do you ever see on a website if you hover your mouse over a graphic, oftentimes you get a little tooltip that displays some text. Well, the text that I want to display is the text in the desk field of Instagram, for example. I want to hover my mouse over that graphic and display that text. It's the title attribute of the graphic. So here, we have the image tag, and it has the attribute of source and the dynamically generated current graphic. I want to then add the attribute of title in the dynamically generated desk. So if we go to the part where our graphic tag ends, we've got quote because the string begins a new, we've got the single quote because that completes the source uh, attribute. Between the single quote and the angle bracket, space title equals single quotes. The title attribute is what causes that tooltip pop-up when you hover your mouse over a graphic 
whatever we write here will display on screen. But we need to display the description in our JSON file, in our JSON data. So here we're going to need to break this again with quotes and double quotes and pluses and all of that so that then we can dynamically load that bit of data. Um, so again, quote to end the string at that point, uh, double quote to end the string at that point, space plus space quote to begin the, the rest of the string. It's going to be very confusing here, but we're doing it piece by piece so it hopefully makes sense. We've got that string that ends there, these double quotes that begin and end, ending single quote there, beginning of the rest of the string. I'm going to break the line there again, because that could go off on and on, but I'm going to break that there. So title equals something, something and plus. And again, before I forget that plus, right there. Just like I have something dynamic plus the string, something dynamic plus the string, something dynamic plus the string. So here, response object social random dot desk. So whatever random number in question we have, let's say two, display its graphic, display the name below it, and display the title. If you save and run that, pick a, a random network, put your mouse on top of the graphic, and you'll see hopefully a tooltip pop up to show you that description that you wrote in the JSON file. If I run this random, hover my mouse over it, the audio network. Randomize again, hover over the graphic, long form videos. Again, hover over there, Google. Okay, the one about Google, we didn't escape the character. I wrote Google's social network. In my case, when I hovered over Google, it only displayed Google, because that single quote is confusing things. That's, that's a special character. So when I have a special character, like a single quote, back in my JSON file, I should put a backslash, not a slash, a backslash, so that that it's processed as a plain old quote, not code. It's almost processing it as code. So it, it only wrote Google and then it stopped. Those are forward slashes, of course, regular old slashes. We've always seen that the backslash it goes back. Let's go back to your JSON file, and if you use an apostrophe like I did for Google's social network, put a backslash. That escapes the character. It renders it as an actual single quote. Run that again I need to get oops, syntax error. Bad escaped character at line 23. Hmm. What are we missing there? It's not liking the backslash. Backslash n, isn't that a new line? Let me double check here. We can check this at json.org. That will tell us what's valid here. What do we need to escape?
Okay, Unicode quote. Unicode apostrophe zero zero twenty seven. Write a single quote in JSON syntax. According to the state machine diagram and JSON website, only escaped double quote characters are allowed, not single quotes. Single quote characters do not need to be escaped. Hmm, but it did get escaped. That's because, okay, I see what's going on. The reason um, the single quote is giving us a problem is because it's seeing um, here, we need to reverse things. I'm not going to, but here's the idea. We've got um, double quotes here, and then we've got single quote here. So then imagine there's a single quote happening right here. Title, single quote. Then we're passing into it description. And in my case, description has a single quote. So then it reads a single quote instead of that one. The description of Google had a single quote, which is overriding this one. So it stops processing the rest of the, the words. So to fix that, we would have to reverse all our instances of our quotes. We would have to go back to string here and start that as a single quote, and that as a single quote. And on all of these, start to use single quotes. Then when we got title, double quote, single quote, like that. So in this case, again, I won't do it completely, but this is what I mean. That would be single quotes there, that would be double quotes there, that would be single quotes there. So I would have to replace all of those. I won't do it, but that's, I guess, how we would fix that, because according to the information, then, the um, Single quotes do not be, need to be escaped, but we are processing it, so it's getting annoying. So what I'm going to do for my here is instead of writing Google social network, I'll write the Google social network. Problem solved. Of course, if I do need to use apostrophes in other parts of the code, then I would have to deal with it eventually. Yes? Why did what? Unicode? It's still okay. So I, I wanted to use a I wanted to use a an apostrophe. So I wrote the Unicode version of it, and it still said, "Okay, great. Here's your apostrophe, the single quote." So it still broke my string, even though I didn't manually write the single quote. I wrote the Unicode to write it, which then processed it, which broke it. So maybe I can use a different kind of apostrophe instead. List Unicode know, back ticks or something. Grave accent. Uh, yeah. Back the grave. There's the acute. What about acute? 
use the Unicode for that. One, I guess. <laughs> Put the apostrophe on the E. Okay, it's going to be maybe one of these. Yeah, go put the poster for some promise form. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, exactly. Th that that sounds like it'll work pretty well. Um, I'd like to know what that character code is in case I don't have an apostrophe to copy in the future. But uh, it's going to be one of these. Just need to find the right one. Finding characters space. Zero two C A. Google's social network. And that one is, for your information, backslash u, which denotes a Unicode character, 02CA. I guess capital matters. Let's see what happens. Capitals probably matter. Too random. Perhaps capitals don't matter, but I would leave them as capitals. It worked with lowercase, but I would leave it uppercase perhaps to see that. I'm going to lose track of it as lowercase rather than the lowercase. So that one seems to give you, I guess, the word apostrophe if you copied from my PDF and such. That's character there escaped so 0 to CA okay uh, we'll uh, take a break at this point because we've still got then the um, the URL to work with if it's working so far it's uh, randomly generating the picture and the text, and we just saw with the title tag, the title attribute, hover your mouse, 140 character missives. Next, after the break, well, I want to use that URL. I want to make these things clickable so that they open up in the web browser the actual link. Uh, we'll take a break. It's 8.13. We'll be back at 8.23, uh, and then we'll add that in. The, we'll use the URL um, property. Can I see your